We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. So our first question, uh, keeping it kind of fun, comes from Bryce2471, asks, were you as scared as the rest of us when 1678 posted their autonomous video? I don't think we were scared as much as maybe realizing how behind we were and how <laughs> we might need to step it up a little bit. A lot of respect. We yeah, always have a lot sure. of respect for 1678. They're our good friends um, from constantly being in the same division at Champs, but they're just a really great team. And honestly, we're not, su we're not surprised to see them do really well at Auton this year. We're pretty reliable in that. I'll put gonna... in our... hey, go ahead. No, no, you go, you go. I was gonna, I was gonna put in our plug. We, we make really good videos too, and we know nothing <laughs> works the first time. So, um... Ooh, wait, are you calling them liars? Are you calling them liars? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey guys, are I just want to, I just want to jump in. By the way, uh, little spoiler: if you are watching premiere night this Sunday, starting at six p.m. Eastern, don't forget submissions are due on Friday. 1678 will be doing a full robot reveal during premiere night as well. So make sure you check that out. 6 p.m. It will be on the Twitch front page as well, too. So we're very excited. So if your team is interested in getting last year, we had 90,000 live views. Uh, hey, go check out premiere night. You can find links in our discord. You know, it'd be cool if we got 90,000 live views on deep dive, but you know. <laughs> it's fine. I'm not upset about it. All right. Uh, so a few people asked us about this, so I'm kind of lumping them all together. So common questions that people had was kind of, if you guys could talk about, uh, your decision to use H Drive last year, and kind of how you guys went about making that decision. Um, do you have any regrets about it? Like, how do you guys thought that went? So, I don't know if you guys want to talk about that at all. So, it was a decision that we made focusing on autonomous. We saw how hard it would to place hatches wherever, and we felt like that lateral motion would be really important. So, that was our decision for having the H Drive in the first place. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we switched out of the H Drive going into IRI. Um, I didn't watch a ton of matches. I wasn't there, but um, everything I heard was that it, it didn't look all that much better. So, I mean, I, I think we, we enjoyed having the H-Drive. Yeah. It's a really fun robot to drive. Um, I think the driver loved, mm -hmm. loved it. Um, defense yeah. is, you know, comes up every year, and uh, sometimes yeah. the robot you build just gets, gets pushed around. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, as much the H-Drive as it is uh, building a 100-pound robot, you know, underweight and, and trying to be faster on the field. So yeah. there's pros and cons to every mm -hmm. bit of it. Sure. A lot of people, like, always joke about our H drive, but honestly, I thought it was pretty fun. It was really cool to see flyby strafe across the field, and that was, like, one of its defining features. And whenever I look at that robot, I just smile, so I don't really regret it. That's all it's about, right? So there you go. <laughs> all right, uh, next question comes from uh, Ar Argia? Argia. Sorry, I don't know how to say your name. Uh, what is one of the biggest challenges organization-wise, and how do you guys combat it? Organization-wise... I would say a large problem that we have every year that I think everyone has every year is that new members sometimes feel a little like shy or like pressure to share their ideas. And especially in an environment where we depend on people's ideas, that can be a little bit difficult to deal with. But we just always have this culture of people encouraging others to step up and share their ideas. And yeah, we just continue doing that. And people over time, like like Parker said, with like certain discussions, like even if it's like robot name, they step up and they share more of their voice. And it's cool to see that experience. Yeah, we definitely have people come out of their <laughs> shell throughout their throughout their, well, not only four years here, but even months. Even some of our rookies are really stepping up already yeah. and coming out of their shell. It's really impressive. Awesome. Uh, next question comes from Javon four four two. And he asked, how do you guys make pick lists for competitions and what will you be looking for in Alliance Partners this season? So you guys kind of talked about the first part of that earlier, but maybe you guys can talk about some things you guys think you're going to be looking at specifically for this season. Um, I think uh, like reliability is always a big thing. Like the reason why we have like so many iterations of our like match sheets is so that we can test like this robot is effective and they're reliable. It's not just like one instance where they're good or necessarily they're bad. Um, another thing I think scoring this year is going to be a pretty, pretty big thing. We talked about how our scouting uh, counts for cycle times. And so we're definitely going to be keeping an eye out for that. Hang. Hang. <laughs> 
you're, so you're, you think it's important to get 25 yeah. points. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Corey <laughs> Walters from uh, Strike Force, uh, our buddy over at 2767, and from Striker, uh, actually, our sponsor of the show, uh, asks, now that you have done a season of the district model, uh, which one do you guys like better, district or regional, and why? So Casey and I have been on this team. This is our third year now, so we've gotten like a year of the regional model and a year of the district model. And honestly, I do really like the competitive environment of a regional, just walking in and there's like the buzz of like 50 different robotics teams. But at the same time, I think I prefer the district model. And why I say that is because like, like the reason why that was adopted to incorporate like more teams into the competitiveness. And I remember this specific experience at district champs where there were um, listing off teams that qualified to make it to Worlds because of their district points and just tons of people screaming and cheering and that excitement and that happiness. I'm really glad that that district model has enabled so many more people to compete and have like the fun that is robotics. So I do like the district model. Parker, any uh, mentor? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've been in first for a long time now. I, 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 I'm disappointed I don't get to travel around the world as much, uh, around the country, uh, to go to these cool regionals. Um, it was always really fun to, you know, go out to Colorado or Arizona um, and meet a lot of new teams. You get to, to meet um, people across the country doing the exact same thing you are. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, with the Texas district now, we get to kind of focus a little bit more around um, our own community uh, here in the state and, and focus on, um, you know, the rivalries between the, the Texas teams that we've got. <laughs> not not that there's any Texas rivalries whatsoever. Oh, no, um, no, no, but, no, no. <laughs> but no, it, it, it is good. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that it, it's kind of lowered the bar for um, teams to get involved in first with the getting more plays on the field for the entry fees. And, uh, and honestly, the, the state championship is a blast. Um, it, it gets you ready for championship for sure. Yeah, I think because I'm kind of like you guys, you know, I'm I'm this is going to be my third year in the district model. And like, yeah, that's the biggest thing I've noticed is I think it the, the actual preparation you get for the world championship is like it's unmatched because you basically get like that world championship level play like way before everyone else. So yeah. I think that's a, a big advantage. So uh, let's see. The next question comes from Pizza Spartan. Uh, he asks, what are the advantages and disadvantages of practicing in a NASA hangar? <laughs> well, it's it's awesome it's absolutely amazing and we're so so fortunate to be to be here and to have this opportunity honestly um we always there's i mean you could say that it would be a disadvantage for people to be walking around seeing us all the time but honestly it's the coolest thing ever to have people in our skywalk up there on tours and we get to kind of inter not really interact with them but we see them we wave and it's really nice to have them up there yeah to, so to explain like right behind with where where the camera is there's this big catwalk across yeah. the the top of the hangar here um where the the nasa johnson space center um a visitor center brings um you know these trams of like a couple hundred people at a time to kind of look at the other end of the building and look at the robotics section down here and we basically cram first right in their face and it's, it's <laughs> fantastic um it's really cool. Yeah, they get to see you know the the students in here working on the weekends, um, and I I think it's it's got to affect them to some amount to say like oh like that's I wish I got to do that you know and and um, I, I like working here because I, my office is right on the other side of that wall and so I just have to walk out here and you know build robots in the evenings but. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's just always such a huge blessing, especially with like the history of this team and how large this facility is. People are are always on Discord or Reddit going like, "Oh my goodness, look at 118 with all their blue <laughs> banners!" But just seeing this history and like understanding that like there are so many robonauts here before you in this facility working hard is really just a humbling thing, and it makes you really excited for the work that you get to do. Uh, yeah. On the disadvantages side, um, you know we are a federal federal facility, so. Um, it makes it a little bit more challenging to get your, your friends and family on site. Um, you know, people, um, and if they're working at their high school or something, can just bring their family on in and they get to see the program. We basically have to organize open house night, um, work with um, the, the facility here to make sure that we get people um, badged properly to come on site and stuff like that. So there are some negative uh, downsides to it, but I think overall, um, yeah. It's, oh. it's been, and we get been to host cool. really cool scrimmages. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we host scrimmages as well. So. How, how did the government shutdown impact you guys last year? Um, Not it, at <laughs> all. I mean, 
the bathrooms yeah. weren't being cleaned and the trash wasn't being taken out, but we were, we could be here and yeah. we came. Everyone asked us about that. They were like, are you okay? Do you still work? And we were just kind of chilling. So, yeah. <laughs> so year to year, there's a little bit of uncertainty when, when that all comes around, but I think right. we've kind of figured out the bureaucracy of it and mm-hmm. making sure that we can continue to keep the facility yeah. open. The lights are um, still on. We are still here. <laughs> yeah. Some of the mentors, um, don't have to work during the day. Some of us do. So you get more time to work on robots. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you guys are like, shut down, shut down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is kind of a cool question. So Eric Klein asks, like with traditional sports, many in FRC would consider members of 118 to be their idol. Who would you guys say is your idols in FRC? Uh, one Maybe you guys can idol. each give an answer. Sorry. One personal idol of mine is um, Alan Gregory from Team Spectrum 3847. He won Woody Flowers last year. And just interacting with this person, you really see like how smart he is and how like crazy passionate he is. And all that he does for his team, especially with like refereeing at like Beck's Worlds and like being a safety inspector at competitions, sorry, a robot inspector at competitions and like hosting TRI every year. I could like go on and list all the amazing things that he does, but he's just such a cool person to meet. And I'm really glad that he's part of the Houston FRC community. Um, I think I look up to really everyone out. Like I know, I know a lot of people may look up to 118, but really we don't, we don't see ourselves that way. We, we look up to 624 and 230, we look up to those different kinds of teams and we see them and we, we try to take inspiration from them any way we can. And we really do a lot of the time. And I hope that, I hope that that is reciprocated for sure. Uh, I'm going to take the moment to, to give a shout out to 2468 out of Austin. Um, you know, I went to school in Austin and unfortunately didn't uh, didn't spend my years there helping a uh, team appreciate out. Um, but, you know, they do a lot for the first community. Um, they're fantastic uh, in their, their chairmans uh, every year. Um, they make change happen. They, they, they do, do make change happen. And um, and I, I'm excited to see what they they bring every year. Um, and so yeah, that's my that's my plug yeah. for. Uh, at our remix competition, they were our alliance partner, and single-handedly, they outscored 33-10. So they're definitely <laughs> they, they are a very good Ooh. team. We have a lot of respect for them. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna phone up later. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, I was gonna say, uh-oh. Um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna do some maybe a little bit quicker answers on some of these because we do have a lot to get through. So just real quick, <laughs> maybe you guys can kind of talk about uh, how quickly, like, how often do you guys meet, and for how long each day? Like, what's your general meeting schedule during the season? Um, so we meet Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. On Saturday, it's about, what is it? One to six, one, one to nine. One to yeah, nine, nine, about hours. that. And then for, during the week, it's um, about uh, five to nine. So we are, we're here about 20 hours a week. Cool. And then uh, let's see. I'm just skipping ahead. Some of these things we already answered. Uh, looking for some insight on pit cards and organization. How do you guys keep your pit running safely, smoothly, clean, and effective? So, Parker, I know you kind of run the pit for 118. Maybe you can give a quick answer here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, just one, be clean. Uh, keep yourself organized. Um, whenever something breaks, you need to know exactly where to find that tool or find that piece of hardware. Um, and then um, full functionals. Uh, it, it's really fun to see a championship. People come by the pit, and they, they just kind of sit there and watch us do our full functionals. Um, it is a part of just it's ingrained in the pit crew culture. You don't go to a match without running your full functional. And FTAs may hate us for it, uh, <laughs> but we are slowly moving the robot as we're doing our full functional. Um, if you go out to a match, work. yeah, and you and you don't know um, that that something doesn't work, you like you've got to know that as the, the flight crew. Um, so just always be really organized and be rigid about that full functional. Um, and zip tie your battery Andersons together. <laughs> your, your battery always might pop so, out, yeah. but you can drag the battery around and stay powered on. So. <laughs> Oh, they so might, well, they might—they might—they might disable you on that one, though. <laughs> somebody asked in the chat. I can see that they asked uh, what a full functional is. Oh, Everything yeah. is functional. Yeah. So, so that's just basically where we run through um, every function that our robot does. We have like a little checklist, and so we have like little driver shortcuts that our technician uses. Yeah, uh, like a systems check that we do, yep. and that just makes sure that we can like see ahead of time like anything that might be broken. Yeah. Every 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 action of the robot, whether it's autonomous or uh, a macro in the co- the software or just running a motor, you check mm-hmm. it all uh, just to make sure that the flight crew's yeah. got a fully functional robot ready to go. Or if you don't have time to fix something, you at least know to tell them, hey, 
um, you know, the lift is only going to go halfway up this match or, you know, whatever it may be, right. just so that they always uh, are prepared and, and ready to, to run the match. All right. Uh, next quick question. Uh, what's the most common misconception about your team? Um, that we know all the answers. Yeah, we <laughs> never. We, we do so much yeah. prototyping. We are not. We don't come out the bat with the mm -hmm. answers. We have, we're super fortunate to have all of our NASA mentors and all of our really, really intelligent students. For but sure. we, we do so much prototyping. We yeah. never know exactly what to do. Yeah, people often, like, just, like, get caught up on, like, the prestige of our team. By the end of the day, we are, like struggling high school students trying to build a robot. We, we feel the same pressure. We go through the same process. And it's just this culture and our really great mentors that allow us to take it to another level. And speaking of taking it to another level, uh, Kenneth from 930 wants to know, in general, what goes into making uh, your reveal video so epic? <laughs> A lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, my one note for this question is late nights. <laughs> um, yeah, I, there's a there's a scene at the very end of uh, Flyby's video in the the Saturn V hangar. Yeah, um, with the hatch rolling. No, no well, not the hatch rolling. The hatch rolling. Uh, the one where it's sitting, it's sitting in front of the rocket, right? Like. It's yeah, like, yeah. So that yeah, I think that we cool. uh, we we were hurriedly running out to that at like like an hour before bag trying to get that shot <laughs> so that we can get back to the shop and and throw it in the bag mm -hmm. uh, but no it's a lot of time um you know it it, it takes basically mm -hmm. a whole day to do um and so you've More got to get day, the sometimes. robot ready ahead of bag fully functional tested well um and and you gotta just make the time to do the video which um you know we make sacrifices because of that sometimes but yeah. um the video is kind of part of the culture, right? Yeah, it's right? worth yeah. it. It's a huge part of, like, why we pride ourselves as a team, that we get to, like, show off this really cool robot. And it does play into, like, our outreach events. And when we ever, like, whenever we talk about robotics, we spend all this effort putting, like, together a video that shows robotics as something, like, cool and exciting and fun that, like, people want to do. And that really goes to show, like, how we want the world to perceive robotics and engineering. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's always the thing people talk the most about. So it's, like, ingrained as part of your guys' team now. Uh, and then last question before we get to our second giveaway, uh, some, uh, Ch Chikanur, sorry, I don't know how to say your name, uh, 148, they said 148 has massive bags of popcorn, 254 has their <laughs> Kool-Aid, uh, what food keeps you guys going? Sure. Zip ties. <laughs> Zip ties. Zip ties. Tex you just they, can't uh, beat that texture. <laughs> they, uh, they, they like to make fun of me. I, I, I stress chew zip ties in the pit, um. <laughs> And they've got this notorious photo of me uh, last year at one Se of our several photos. Several, at one They're of in a folder events. called zip ties. Um, we we had to do this quick change oh. on on our climber subsystem, and I was just chomping away after it, just kind of like de-stressing. And um, they won't let it down. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe Tyler can pull that up on our uh, on our media here. Uh, uh, maybe we can pull that up while we're going over our next giveaway, uh, which is going to be <laughs> for that extra shirt and. Uh, and the hat. We're doing the shirt and the hat together. Oh, did he find it? You guys put them in there. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. No, wait, I think he's about to pull it up. I said so there was a picture. Oh. You, you look like you're a farmer, like, chewing on a straw of corn. <laughs> I didn't know those existed. <laughs> you were looking oh, at the you camera. Go. There you go. Right. We'll fist pump. <laughs> that's a, that's in the back. Keeper. I think there's your new profile picture. Uh, there. there you uh, go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier 2 plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.